Oh, hi. I was a little short on rent this month, so I decided to look for a job on Craigslist. The title said something like Seaman Wanted, and it paid a good amount of money. So now I'm out here in Egypt. All right, let's get to fishing. This might take a while. I think we caught something. The ad didn't say anything about pollution. Well, I'm out of a job, and apparently so is the entire country. So before I get evicted and join the revolution, let's play with Seaman. Seaman is by no means an obscure title, at least not anymore. Thanks in large part to the internet, it has been widely recognized as one of the Dreamcast must-play games. My name is Seaman. You don't know me, but you will. We're talking about a system that had some heavy hitters like Shenmue, Jet Grind Radio, and the definitive port of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. If you're not already familiar with Seaman, then this might seem a little strange. How does a talking pet simulator have the same level of prestige as a game where you can fight as a sentient cactus named Amigo? Well, I'll explain that and more. But first, the 6 o'clock news. Dory? Our top story this evening concerns a legendary creature that some say could overturn Darwin's theory of evolution. Known as Seaman, this creature will go on public display for the first time in Japan. Seaman was first discovered in 1933 by the French biologist Jean-Paul Gasset. However, the lack of any living specimen casts doubt about its existence. All of that changed when a living Seaman was captured for the first time near Alexandria, Egypt. Excuse me, sir, can you confirm if you caught the creature? No, no, I didn't, I didn't catch it. Oh, did you find anything? Well, I found out I have the end of this week to pay rent. I hope I don't get evicted. The inspiration for Seaman came from a lunch meeting that game designer Yut Saito attended with other staff members. They discussed the ongoing development on an aquarium simulator that had users take care of exotic fish as they change and grow. Saito jokingly pitched the idea of having the fish talk to players and say things like, Hey, what are you looking at, dumbass? To his surprise, the team was genuinely interested in the concept. They started to ask questions and he started throwing out ideas. He said the game would have voice recognition software that allowed communication between player and fish. When it was decided to give the fish a human face and voice, the name Seaman came naturally. The inspiration came from Saito's childhood fascination with sea monkeys. The amazing live sea monkeys! Fill your tank with water! Add your eggs, feed your sea monkeys! And watch them grow, wiggle, and play! Yeah! All of the key ideas that defined Seaman came from that lunch meeting, but one idea pushed it over the edge and into new territory. Saito scrapped the exotic fish idea and wanted the player to raise a fictional ancient creature instead. This creature was believed to have played a direct role in helping build Egypt's third dynasty through language. More on that later. The game started development on the Macintosh computer. What you're seeing right now is a very early prototype. Developing the game on Apple's hardware proved to be difficult and expensive. So it was decided to move development onto Sega's console, the Dreamcast. The game had to be reworked from the ground up but Sega was able to provide resources like the latest in voice recognition technology. Now, with a dedicated staff and a higher budget, the game was able to meet its ambitious ideas. Their first prototype was displayed in a real aquarium, where Saito and his team observed regular people interacting with Seaman. According to Saito, the prototype was not great and showed limitations in the voice recognition software. The team expected simple responses to Seaman's questions, but the public answered more complicated than they had anticipated. Seaman's AI couldn't predict responses if it was a long string of words, so they had to find some way to streamline the process. 
The solution was simple. Seaman would grow more impatient with the player as they said words or phrases that the AI didn't recognize. The idea being, after the third or fourth attempt, a player would break up their sentence into just a few words. Good morning, Seaman. What do you want? Seaman, you're going to fucking die. He's not responding. Die. That's very nice of you. We're going to turn you into a fish sandwich. Fish sandwich. Seaman sucks. He does suck. Bitch! This change made Seaman come off as a bit of a jerk, which is a personality trait that stuck around and even influenced the game's marketing. You may not think I'm attractive, but your wife will. Grrr. Against all odds, the game sold very well in Japan, close to 400,000 copies. It sits as the third highest selling Dreamcast title, just below Resident Evil, Code Veronica, and Sonic Adventure. Not bad at all for a new IP, especially for one as strange as Seaman. The game managed to reach new markets. Seaman was very popular with women. In fact, they made up the majority of the player base. It was also a big system seller. People who bought Seaman also bought a Dreamcast. It was a bit of a cultural phenomenon for a while. The team successfully reached the casual market, and it's not hard to see why. It all comes down to the controls. In previous generations, you'd have one, two, maybe six buttons on a controller. It only got more complicated with the introduction of 3D games. But just how easy is it to play Nintendo 64? After all, the controller looks like it could be used on some kind of military jet. This generation was a jumping off point for a lot of casual consumers, and I don't blame them. I've been gaming for over 15 years now, and I still don't know what the fuck this is. Seaman's key into the casual market was the Dreamcast microphone. It was an easy concept to understand, and the commercials made sure to highlight this aspect of gameplay above all else. <laughs> it took around 9 months to have the game localized for an English speaking audience. Most of that time was dedicated to changing a lot of culturally specific lines of dialogue related to politics, slang, and sex. It wasn't until Saito met with Sega's American lawyer where he was informed about the title's unintentional double entendre. One of the major changes in localization came from a feature where Seaman would read a player's memory card and say things like, You spent way too much time playing Sonic Adventure last night and didn't take care of me. According to Saito, this was removed due to privacy concerns in the States. Strangely enough, Metal Gear Solid, a game that was released one year prior to Seaman, had a similar feature with the boss Psycho Mantis. Now I'll read more deeply into your soul. Ah, I can see into your mind. Hmm. You have not saved often. Are hey You Pikachu is a virtual pet game where you use the Nintendo 64 microphone to interact with the iconic yellow rat. But unlike Seaman, this game barely worked. You gotta see this. I need witnesses. Pikachu, over here! It listens. If only my family would. What? I'm talking to Pikachu, my new best friend. In this commercial, Frankie Muniz tells the viewer that Pikachu understands almost 200 words. In an interview with GameWeek.com, Saito was asked about the similarities between the two titles. His response was, Nintendo's microphone is not capable of voice recognition. It's only voice reactive. It can't respond to as many words. Seaman can recognize approximately 10,000 different words and phrases. Despite its success in Japan, Seaman didn't sell as well in the States. It's probably because the PlayStation 2 had already been out for 6 months and it had a DVD player, while the Dreamcast could only play Smash Mouth CDs. Sega didn't stand a chance. Seaman was not without its faults, mainly attributed to the limited memory space of the Dreamcast hardware. In an interview with The Verge, Saito compared the communication system to playing a game of poker. He went on to say, 
Seaman is a game with a lot of push-pull game elements in the same way as poker. That back and forth is a driving mechanic of the game. Giving Seaman a different keyword leads to an entirely new conversational path. And perhaps that is the easiest way to convey this concept. Perhaps the biggest misconception about Seaman is that you can ask it just about anything and it'll answer. But that's only partially true. In the beginning, Seaman will ask you basic questions like your age, sex, and location. This information is for the AI to build a user profile for reference in later conversations. This early part in the game determines which branches of dialogue you'll get, and because of that, each player has a uniquely tailored experience. This method of communication works to the game's credit, but it does cut into the potential replay value. If you wanted to get more Seaman, you could go online with parent permission and go to www.meetseaman.com. This website is no longer up, but thanks to the web archive, the website is accessible once again. The site's layout is supposed to look like an official science journal, and to the team's credit, this is done very well. Back in the day, you could have read updates from the fictional expedition team in their efforts to capture and document Seaman. If you want to know more about Seaman's fictional history, then you owe it to yourself to check out this website. The link to this site, as well as any other articles mentioned in this video, can be found in the description. Seaman had one of the best marketing campaigns a game has ever received, and it's unfortunate that it didn't sell as well as it did in Japan, because clearly there was a lot of effort put in here. We'll talk more about Seaman after these messages. It's been over 20 years since Seaman made its debut, and nothing has come close to matching its strange inventiveness. It's really disappointing when you consider how much technology and AI have advanced since then. It should be mentioned that Seaman did receive a sequel and some expansions, but those were Japan exclusive, so we won't discuss those here. In 2009, Microsoft revealed Project Natal, which advertised an advanced AI that could interact with users like no other. His name was Milo. Hi, I'm Milo. How are you doing? Hi, Claire. You okay? Actually, I'm a bit nervous. You? Nervous? I don't believe it. This is the first time that thousands of people are going to see this. Thousands of people. This all turned out to be just smoke and mirrors. The technology didn't actually exist, and Microsoft basically lied to all of us. Peter Molyneux, the game's designer, was later interviewed about this disaster of a train wreck, and he said, It was a disaster, right? It was a train wreck. To be fair, in the interview, he made it sound like Microsoft lied to his team about the technology and what it was capable of. Project Natal ended up being downgraded to a slightly better version of the PlayStation's iToy, and that's not saying very much. That following year, Saito teased the possibility of Seaman returning to the Nintendo 3DS of all systems. At first, it seemed like an odd pairing, but early in Seaman's development, before choosing to develop the game on the Dreamcast, the Nintendo 64 disk drive was a possible candidate. Saito was also good friends with Shigeru Miyamoto and Satori Wada. He showed them early versions of Seaman to get feedback and notes. Not only that, after Seaman's release, Saito developed Odama on the Nintendo GameCube. This game utilized a microphone to command a group of soldiers through a battlefield, and it was also a pinball game. <laughs> Iwata was the one who approached Saito about bringing Seaman to the Nintendo 3DS, but for an undisclosed reason, the game was cancelled very early in development. Saito ended up developing another game on the handheld, this time an eShop exclusive. This game was titled Aero Porter, a simulation puzzle game that involved the player sorting out luggages at an airport. On July 11, 2015, a close friend of Saito passed away. That friend was Satoru Iwata, then president and CEO of Nintendo. The news sent shockwaves across the video game industry. Friends, fans, and other companies all came together to mourn the loss of this video game industry legend. Saito wrote a heartfelt blog post on his website, reminiscing on the times the two spent together, experimenting with new technology and ideas. At the end of his post, he wrote the following. When I left the Seaman project, 
I sent you a book and a letter. Whether you actually read them or not has been on my mind ever since. Life is always just a succession of regrets. Iwara-san, thank you for everything. I don't typically look up to a lot of people, but I really respected you. I'm still here, and although I almost lost hope in regards to being a creator and life in general, I think I want to challenge myself once more. Saito was inspired by his late friend and colleague to come out of retirement. He made it his goal to continue to make weird and interesting games that push technical boundaries. Two years later, in 2017, he started the Seaman Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. This organization is going to create an advanced conversation engine that would be able to talk without a script. Unlike Seaman, which required specific keywords to advance the conversation, this AI would be able to create new lines of dialogue on the fly. So, does this mean we'll get a new Seaman anytime soon? Yes and no. Right now, the team is developing the project's engine to be used universally across home appliances, motor vehicles, and other electronics. It's still a work in progress, and when it's complete, there's still the matter of applying this tech to other languages. But, when it's ready, then a new Seaman game is sure to follow. My one and only concern is how this technology will protect user information. Funny enough, Seaman's instruction booklet mentions how this personal information shared with Seaman cannot be leaked to an outside source. I hope that remains true for Seaman's future because I shared some secrets with it that no one must know. After all, this is the face of someone you can trust. Yut Saito created one of video game's strangest and most recognizable characters. Still, to this day, nothing has come close. I think enough time has passed for people to have recognized Seaman's ambitiousness. And I for one cannot wait for the next installment, whenever that may be. Oh, I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee.